All right. So today we're uh, we're going to dive into something pretty interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like the Royal Air Force might be well. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. Shaking things up a bit with their fighter jet fleet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we've got some sources here that suggest that they might be thinking about getting more of those F-35As. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, and maybe kind of shifting away from getting more Eurofighter Typhoons. That is, uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out, right? Yeah. You know, like every, every choice has its own, you know. Of course. That Pluses is. and minuses. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's always going to be those trade-offs. Right. So I guess like the first question that comes to mind is like, why? Why would they even consider this? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, when we really get down to it, it's, you know, what is the advantage of going with more F-35 days? Yeah. Compared to sticking with the Eurofighters that they already have. Yeah. And from what I'm seeing here, it seems like a big part of it is this whole technology thing. Like the F-35A, it's a fifth generation stealth fighter. Fifth gen. Yep. I mean, that's that's pretty serious stuff. Yeah. And basically what that means is... It's way harder to see on radar. Yeah. It's like it's like a ghost on their screens. Pretty much. Yeah. Which is huge when you think about it. Oh, absolutely. Like the Eurofighter is really good too. Oh, yeah. Fantastic aircraft. But it's, it's classified as like 4.5 generation. Yeah. Which means it's not quite as sneaky. Not as stealthy, no. So what does that really mean in a fight though? Well, think about it like this. I mean, if you're in a in a contested airspace, right? You know, somewhere where there's a lot of potential threats, mm -hmm. that stealth capability, yeah, could be the difference between being able to operate freely, right, versus being targeted the second you show up on radar. Ah, so you're saying they could basically get it and do what they need to do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's all about that first look, first shot advantage. And and get out without anyone even knowing they were there. Ideally, yeah. <sighs> Plus, on top of that, the F-35, it's got this incredible sensor fusion capability. Yeah, yeah, I was reading about that. Basically, it takes all this information from all these different sensors and puts it together for the pilot. So it's like giving them this, like, total awareness. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's like having, a you know, like a God's eye view of the battle space. So it's not just about being invisible. It's about having all the information, too. It's a whole package, really. And, you know, another thing that our sources have mentioned is the cost. Oh, right. It seems like the F-35A might actually be cheaper per unit. Well, no, that's something you don't see every day, is it? No, not really. Newer tech and cheaper. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It is, but the numbers are there. From what I'm seeing, it looks like the F-35A comes in at around 64 million pounds. Per aircraft. Yeah. Per aircraft, yeah. Whereas the Eurofighter Typhoon is more like 73 million. So you're talking about almost a 10 million pound difference. Yeah, per plane. Per plane, yeah. What? And if you're buying a whole bunch of them. That adds up fast. That's a lot of money. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I do wonder about the long-term costs. Ah, uh, good point. Like, is the F-35A more expensive to maintain? That's always a big question with these advanced systems, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, they can be more complex, so there's always that potential. Yeah. But from what the analysis is showing right now, yeah. that initial acquisition cost mm -hmm. seems yeah. to be a major factor in the decision. Okay, that makes sense. But it's not just about the money and the tech, though, is it? No, definitely not. There are all these other things to consider, too. Oh, yeah. What about the impact on the UK's own defense industry? Exactly. Like the Eurofighter program, mm -hmm. it supports a ton of jobs. Thousands of jobs. Yeah. And it involves some really big UK companies like BAE Systems and Rolls-Royce. Absolutely. And those are major players in the defense sector. So if they shift to mostly buying F-35As... That could have some pretty significant economic repercussions. Yeah, and it also makes you think about yeah. how reliant do we want to be on technology from other countries. Mm. That's the big question of strategic autonomy, isn't it? Mm. It's a balancing act for every country. Yeah. You want the best tech, but you also want to support your own industry. Right. And you want to be able to make your own decisions. Exactly. Without being too dependent on someone else. Yeah, it seems like the RAF is already starting to move in this direction anyway. How so? Well, they're already retiring some of their older Eurofighters. Those are ones. Yeah, yeah, those older ones. Makes sense. I mean, those are getting up there in age. Yeah. And it looks like getting more F-35As is part of their long-term modernization plan. So it's like they're thinking ahead. Yeah. Even though the Eurofighter is supposed to be around until like 2040. Right. They're probably going to start phasing out those older Typhoons and replacing them with F-35s as time goes on. So it's like a gradual transition. Yeah, that's what it seems like. It's fascinating how all these factors are coming together. Yeah. I mean, you've got the technology advantage, mm. the potential cost savings, and this long-term vision for modernization. Right. 
But at the same time, you have to think about the impact on domestic industries. Yeah. And that whole question of maintaining strategic independence. Right. So it's not just a simple yes or no decision. No, not at all. It's a lot more complicated than that. Way more. It's like this really complicated mix of like yeah. getting the best equipment, managing the budget. Absolutely. And all these broader implications for the UK's economy and its place in the world. Exactly. It's like this multi-dimensional chess game. And and that's what makes it so interesting. Oh yeah. This is a big decision with a lot of moving parts. And it makes you wonder like as technology keeps getting more and more advanced, right? how are countries going to balance mm -hmm. the need to have the most cutting edge military? The best of the best. Yeah, with the need to support their own industries yeah. and stay independent on the world stage. That's a question that every nation is going to have to grapple with. Yeah, because you can't just ignore those other things. No, not if you want to stay in the game. Wow, this, is, uh, this has really got me thinking. Yeah. It's a lot to unpack, isn't it? Yeah, thanks for taking the time to break this down with me. Absolutely, this is a good one. It really was. Well, that's it for our deep dive today. Until next time. We'll see you next time.